they do it very well. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge all the dignitaries, officials, friends uh, of the Greater Nichols community. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it. It means a lot to Gene and, and I. Um, most importantly, the students, the students that are here. Uh, this, this is a great uh, event. It's a great opportunity. Uh, I know that none of you have seen one of these before, at least here at Nichols, so, uh, so welcome. And we, we do everything we do for the students, and particularly the veterans. Um, and veterans, uh, I, I got your, your cord and I'm wearing it, uh, and I'm proud to be a veteran. I'm very proud to be the leader at a, at a university that is named after a wounded warrior, uh, that is named after someone who, uh, who served his, his country uh, and, uh, and uh, was, was wounded in that course and came back to Louisiana and uh, was an elected uh, leader uh, here. And it's, uh, it's, it's, it's very sobering to, to be in that position. Um, I was here for a few weeks and I, I looked around and I asked some of the, the trusted leadership, uh, when are we going to have the inauguration? And I kind of got the blank stare back, what, what do you mean inauguration? I said, well, how did you do the last one? And they go, well, we didn't have one. I said, well, how about the one before that? They said, we didn't have one. Uh, I, I combed the two volume set of history and I couldn't find inauguration or investiture. And so I realized that we were going to have to, we we're going to have to, to do, do something. Um, uh, about that. Uh, so what does a university do when it doesn't know what to do? It forms a committee. Uh, and so, and so a, a committee was formed and that committee was, was led by uh, Monique Crochet and Brenda Haskins and Audrey Dozer and a whole bunch of others. And if, if, if you're on the committee, whether you're on stage or in the audience, please stand up. Please. And so it wasn't very long ago that we, we picked the today's date and, uh, and all of this happened. Um, and I was, I was interviewed uh, a little bit ago by a, by a student, a journalism student. Uh, and I, I don't know if she was working the beat or working the angle, but she said, so whose idea was this inauguration thing? And uh, I said, what do you mean whose idea was it? I said, this is what universities do. This is how universities transition, and so, uh, so we've, 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 we've gone through that and we've learned how to do that. And the other point we made was, this is not about Bruce Murphy. I know it looks like it and it sounds like it, but it's not really about Bruce Murphy. It's about Nichols, okay? It's putting the spotlight on Nichols, and that's what we're here today to do, to, to open our doors up to the community, invite them in, uh, and let them see what we're all about. Now, if you saw the program and you saw all of the activities that are going on this week, we have academic enrichment events, we have uh, cultural events, we have art, we have athletic events, we have all sorts of things going on. Those things were going to be going on anyway. It's part of the Jubilee, okay? We just put a sign outside of the door saying inaugural, official inaugural event, okay? That was done deliberately. That was done deliberately. So we do that sort of thing all the time at Nichols. So come on more frequently if, you, if, if this is one of your first times in a long time. Uh, come on out, because we're always doing fantastic things here. Now, Gene and I are new to the area, and we're, we're, we're kind of feeling our way through it, thanks to some, some very helpful guides, like the mayor and, and his wife and others that have, that have uh, introduced us to, uh, to, to a number of things. Uh, we, we should have known. First, I thought maybe about this inauguration. Maybe they don't know how to do parties. But then we had the Mardi Gras things. I go, they know how to do parties. Uh, so. Uh, but, but the number one question that, that I get is, well, how do you like it? And, uh, and it reminds me of, of my grandfather, Tom. And uh, when he was a little boy, he was born in the, in the late uh, 1800, or 1800s. And so when he was a little boy, they didn't have automobiles. They had horses and wagons and stuff like that. And so they didn't have gas stations on the corners. They had blacksmith shops. And every day, he'd be going home from school, a little boy going home from school, and he'd stop and look at that blacksmith. And the blacksmith, big burly blacksmith, little Tom looking in the door, and that sparks were flying. And the blacksmith's hitting the anvil, and he's making horseshoes, and he's making stuff, and sparks are flying everywhere, and he's just wide-eyed looking at that. And he did it every single day. He'd stand there for about 10, 20 minutes, and he just did it every day. And he, one day, blacksmith's hitting that, the bellows are going, the flames coming out, and the blacksmith must have hit the, the horseshoe at an angle because it went flying. It went flying right over by little Tommy Amright. And uh, he looked at it, and he reached over, and he picked it up. Red hot horseshoe. And he dropped it right away. And the blacksmith looks, you know, coming over to him, and he goes, what's the matter, Sonny? 
Did you burn yourself? My grandfather said, no, it just doesn't take me long to look at a horseshoe. <laughs> well, that's, that's how Gene and I feel about nickels. Uh, it didn't take us long to look at nickels. We, they, I was always told that when it's right, you'll know it. And uh, we knew it was right. We knew it was right from the first time we stepped on campus, from the faculty, from the students, from the, uh, the staff, from the administrators, from the community. It's such a, a, a warm and welcoming place that, that we, we knew it was, uh, it was right for us. And, and we've enjoyed every minute here that we've had, and we're looking forward together to many years to come. Uh, my other grandfather, uh, Alex Murphy, uh, worked on the railroad. He was a brakeman. And uh, it was hard work. He didn't have any education to speak of. It was hard work, it was dirty work, and it was dangerous work. In fact, he lost an arm doing that work and, uh, uh, and had to get by the rest of his life as best he could. And so the future for his son, George, uh, didn't look very good either. He had no prospects of, of, of education. Uh, he had no prospects of getting a good job, and he probably followed the same sort of track that his dad, Alex, did. But then something happened. There was a difference. Two things happened, and they were due to the GI Bill and due to the generosity of a donor. And through the generosity of a donor and with the GI Bill, uh, my dad was able to go to college. He was able to go to the University of Pittsburgh and ultimately complete his, his doctorate uh, and then get into the aerospace business. And so he became uh, an aerospace uh, engineer and, and gave lectures all over the world and uh, attended conferences all over the world. And his life was changed. And what was the difference? Well, the difference was affordable, accessible, public, higher education. That's what made the difference in that trajectory. And so I don't think that, that Alex Murphy could have predicted that his grandson would be a university president. I think George Murphy might have, but the difference was made already. The difference was having the opportunity to go to quality, higher education and do that with the assistance that, that he got. We know that it makes a difference if you go to college. The college payoff, which is a report that was published a few years ago, just a couple years ago, by Georgetown University, their Center for Education and the Workforce, they said that those with a bachelor's degree, no matter what field, I emphasize no matter what field, earn vastly more than their counterparts with some college or a high school diploma indicating that no matter what the level of attainment and field of study, simply earning a four-year degree is often integral to the financial su success in later life. And we've heard testimonies already today from people that said it made a difference in their lives, that coming to Nichols and graduating uh, made a difference in their life. Obtaining a post-secondary credential is almost always worth it. We talk about return on investment as evidence of by higher earnings over a lifetime. The higher the level of educational attainment, the higher the payoff. What's more, the gap is widening. In 2002, a bachelor's degree holder could expect to earn 75% more over a lifetime than someone with only a high school diploma. Today, that premium is 84%. So on average, a high school dropout can expect to earn $973,000 over a lifetime, and a worker with a bachelor's degree will earn $2.3 million over that lifetime. Graduate degrees confer even higher offerings. So where does Nichols fit in that? Well, Nichols is actually part of all of that, of course. And looking backward just over the past year, we see a number of things that we can be proud of. It's, the, it's sort of the, the, uh, the, the cards that I was dealt. It's, it's sort of what, what makes it uh, so, so, such a great pleasure to be here. We, so we, our honors program had a record number of graduates. Last year, uh, we saw and Gene and I attended the 10th anniversary of the Bachelor of Science degree in Geomatics the only geomatics program in Louisiana and one of only three in the southeastern United States. Uh, and I can tell you that I have had uh, representatives from business and industry that have approached in that particular program and say, we want to help. We like the graduates. We like what happens there. So uh, we want to play in that arena. Uh, the College of Education continues to its collaboration with local districts, providing professional de uh, development for teachers and school leaders and counselors and other professionals who uh, provided by the Department of Teacher Education, Psychology, and the Louisiana Center for the Study of Dyslexia. Our Bachelor of Science in Nursing program and the Master of Science in Nursing program here at Nichols as part of a four-member university consortium received full accreditation by the Commission on Coll Collegiate Nursing Education, their continuing education 
uh, uh, program received full accreditation with distinction. 2013 also saw the, the start of the seventh cohort of the EMBA uh, program. It was expanded based on the demand for the program. Uh, we've negotiated the delivery of faculty uh, in our Department of History and Geography to begin giving coursework, credited coursework, uh, with the National World War II Museum. We successfully opened the Calais Rec Recreation Center and significantly improved the quality of life for students' life at Nichols, as well as for 136 faculty and staff memberships through that uh, rec center. Uh, the Auxiliary Services Unit experienced high campus and community resulting in net uh, income of $600,000 more than budgeted, and over $5 million of auxiliary funds has been used over the last four to five years to fund campus operations. So what's up in the future? What are we looking for ahead? I have already laid out, and if it sounds like I'm repeating it, that's intentional. It's what we call in the classroom reinforcement. Uh, I have laid out some imperatives for Nichols. I'll repeat them now. Uh, and they mean different things to different people. They, they mean something to the faculty. They mean something different to the students. They mean something different to the staff. The first point is student opportunity and success. You've heard that, that, we, that this is a, a goal to complete uh, the undergraduate and graduate de degrees. And so we want to make it absolutely uh, possible and uh, uh, for, for our students to have those opportunities and be successful. So if you're a student, that means you study hard. That means you take the, car, the hard classes. That means you seek out the faculty and you find out where you ought to be headed. If you're a faculty member, that means you understand what the students' needs are and that we offer those classes that are going to help, that are going to help them make it through their curriculum. If you're a staff member, that means we might you know, uh, make sure that we are responsive to the students. And I hear all the time how responsive to students' needs, how responsive to problems, how responsive to, to uh, calls from parents and so forth we are. So that's something we're already doing very well. My second point is a spirit of innovation. And I think we've, I've seen that everywhere I've looked. Let's do something different. This, this, today, this is something this institution has never done. In just a few short weeks, they put together a magnificent program, a magnificent series of events for the public. That's the kind of thing, but that innovation also carries into coursework, it carries into uh, undergraduate research, it carries into all of the things uh, that we're doing and we're going to continue to do that. My third point is internationalization. It is ever increasingly a global world. All of our graduates will be working in a global environment. They need to understand what that means. And so we will be encouraging expansion of our study abroad programs and expansion of opportunities for students from other countries to come and study at Nichols. I believe that we have some unique gems here at Nichols that they can get probably nowhere else in the world, and we want to have them take advantage of that, and we want to have them go back to their countries uh, and, and uh, spread the word. And finally, uh, and, and this covers everything, is serving the needs of the region and the state of Louisiana. We are a public institution. We, we exist uh, to serve those needs. Uh, it's my uh, initial estimate that we are doing a fantastic job of that when you look at the percentage of, of uh, nurses uh, in this region that are Nichols graduates, when you look at the percentage uh, of, of teachers uh, in this region who are Nichols graduates, we are definitely doing that. But we're also serving the, ex the expanding business and industry of this region. And as that continues to grow, we will continue to look for partnerships and opportunities to work with business and industry uh, in doing that. Uh, we are, are, have already started to involve a larger section of the campus community uh, during budget and strategy talks. Uh, and we, have ex uh, we are expanding the, our internal uh, uh, governance mechanisms to have more 